Howdy dudes. Uh, welcome back to the second floor. I know it's been a while, but uh, we're all over the place. Anyway, you can tell by the uh, coating of dust on myself and everything else, we've moved into the drywall hanging and finishing phase. If anyone's been following the channel, you can pick that up by context clues of other stupid videos I've made. Um, I'm going to give you a little tips and tricks on, uh, on finishing here. I'm not the best finisher in the world. I'll tell you that right now. And you're like, well, why would I take tips from some Joe Blow McJackass? Why would I listen to this guy? And uh, I'll tell you why. Um, <clears throat> well, first let me tell you this. Uh, there's a very funny comic out of LA named Patrick Keene, and I'm about to, to destroy one of his bits, but he's got a funny bit about why, uh, why there's more white coaches. And, and it's not, the ratio is not the same to black players. And he said it's supposed to be that way because white people are, are uh, more used to standing on the sidelines and watching the game. <laughs> Basically, he talks about how Michael Jordan is uh, an amazing basketball player, one of the best, but uh, not the, uh, but a terrible coach. Because you can't just go, all right, guys, just go jump over those six guys and dunk them. Masons and finishers, uh, guys that do that full time and do that all the time, it's so technique heavy. It's very technique heavy. So when they're teaching you, they're just you just watch them going real fast, and they're like, just like this, this, and this, wham, 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 and it looks smooth as glass. And then you're doing it, and it just looks like mashed asshole. So you can't figure out why it's so bad. Um, so I'm gonna keep it, try to keep it as simple as possible in uh, in showing you how I do it. Um, I basically throughout the room, I've got three things set up. One's just the tape coat. The tape coat is just joint compound with the drywall tape laid up in it. The purpose of the tape is when you have seams, uh, if you just had joint compound and no tape, you'd have as soon as the joint compound dried, you'd have a big old crack in it. Then step two, you take your uh, their six inch knife and you put a nice coat over top of that. You can do step one and two at the same time, which I often do, but uh, there's a lot of shrinkage. Significant shrinkage. And the shrinkage, basically, you're almost sort of wasting mud, in my opinion, so sometimes it's good to do it in three steps. Um, it seems like when you're watching someone do it, it looks like they're just flat on the wall, spreading it on out there, right? But they're not. Uh, I'm exaggerating this. For the purpose of, here's where the joint is, right? The knife is gonna actually sit like that. That's an exaggerated picture of it, but really it's closer to that. You want like a 16 inch, so the farther out, as the joint is right here, and you're out from the center, the farther of a spread you get, you're gonna be able to run your hand down it and not see that hump. Like if you're in a room, like big floor to ceiling windows, and they don't spread that mud out, it looks good straight on when you paint it, but then when the sun beats down on it, you're going to see all this on the wall. If you're ever in like a shitty apartment or a place where the finishing is bad, you'll see every single joint depending on the time of the day, the way the light hits it. So you're going to have that nice big feather. Feathers it out nicely. And this big old fat daddy right here, this is uh, step three really. Uh, a lot of this business. That's where you take your 16 inch knife and you feather it out real nicely. Alright, not all, uh, not all joint pine. Not all joint compounds the same. When you go, this is plus three. At Lowe's, this is the brand they carry. I don't even know what. USG sheetrock. Alright. Um, you'll see, yeah, quite a few buckets down there. This brand, they have like a dark blue top, light, like light blue and green. Just read really like. This is the, it even says topping on it. It's a lot lighter, a lot heavier, but waterier. It's kind of like you want something that's lightweight and strong for the first coat, which is just read it. So it'll say if you want first coat or not. The reason that matters, you're trying to put it on thick and you're using the topping mud, it just starts dropping everywhere and it's just like it's just wet as shit and it's a big mess. So for our purposes, you can do all of it with the lightweight stuff. You just have like, uh, sometimes you finish and you're sanding, you see all these little. Uh, craters, I guess you could call them. You can't see very well, but that's the cratering, cratering, cratering 
that you get a lot of times with the uh, lot more lightweight joint compound. All right, this dude right here wasn't taped. I ran tape up this sheet of drywall to bring it up to get the angle right. This uh, isn't a typical detail that you're gonna run into, it's kind of a bitch, but it gives me the opportunity to show you how to put the actual tape on. Um, I like to have my tape done first. They make the like mesh and all this other horseshit, but I just like the old school tape really. It has a little crease in the middle. Alright, I have my tape ready. You can't with tape. Uh, some dudes, I see him uh, watch these two old finishers get into like a yelling argument, so I don't know, I guess there's, there's merit to both, really. Uh, real old school dudes will run it through water, they'll put it in, a, they'll get the tape totally wet, which I see a lot of merit in. The reason, sometimes when you're finishing and you don't have enough mud or whatever moisture on the paper tape, you'll get like a little air bubble behind it and once that happens it's a real bitch because then you got to cut the paper out put more paper in there again you just have to make sure you have a generous bit of mud to receive the tape Pressed in completely into that mud. The textbook way is to just leave it like that. If you're new to mudding, I would just leave it, let it dry, then come and do it. But because I'm just a stone badass, I'm gonna go ahead and second coat it while I'm here. The trick of corners is don't keep overworking them because you can, you go down one end and you're going to take the bit off the other. Also, they sell um, corner trails. Um, if you're into that, go for it, but if you ever walk onto a professional site with a corner trail, they're going to laugh you right out of the place. And in between, you gotta sand it. The thicker you put it on, the more you gotta sand it off. Uh, they make a lot of nice things like this here. This is the old pole sander. Um, and you can get palm sander. You don't wanna do, you can use like an electric palm sander if you like, but you gotta be careful. You can actually take the paper right off and then you're, what's the goddamn point, really? I pretty much do 98% of it with this sponge. This one sponge, I'll probably used for most, almost the whole floor, really. Um, this sponge I like, it's got a coarse side on one and then a little bit finer on the other. It might be difficult to see this. You'd be like, man, that already looks so smooth. And uh, the wall's also smooth as well. <laughs> Get it? Like I'm smooth? Um, yeah, anyway. Uh, see this little bit right here? Like I said, the coarse side, take it off real quick. But then you kind of measure it in. You're not trying to take it all the way out. What you're going for is not visually straight. You want to be able to, if you can run your hand down it, your eyes closed, same thing with like body work of a car, and you can't sit, feel where the seam is, like right there, I can feel there's a tiny bit of a hump. 
kind of concave in right there. This is another very important part of finishing. So I'll mark that little area there so I know I come back when I get my mud out and take care of that bit. Alright, so you have your pencil mark there so you know that's where you need to float that out a bit more. Having your pencil mark still in there, you'll know later that's where you gotta come back and sand it. Alright, now I'm about to take you to Luke's high level finishing school. This is this is top shelf shit. This is, separates the, uh, the children from the adults. Trying to stay gender neutral. Um, this will be coming to a lot if you have like a if you want to have an exposed chimney and you're like, how do I finish this up to it? Some people do they just do a nasty ass cock joint to it. I don't like that. I don't play that, it's not my bag. And it has a little gap here, it's a pretty good size gap. This is plastic corner bead. Initially, I should have done this when I did the first coat, but I didn't think I had any of this and I found some in the basement. So for this big gap, I'm gonna go the opposite direction. Drop that guy in there. staple gun it in. I have this big seam here. Alright, and when I got this, I'm basically going to want to cut almost the entire length of one side off there. And I usually only leave as much on one side is the width of the, is the thickness of the drywall. Alright, I'm gonna slide up in there. Slide it in there. Staple it in. around the top. And then what is very important is your corner is tight. And the rest of that I'm not really too concerned with because there's going to be a built-in shelf going from here out so I can just fill that up with caulk and make it as ugly as possible. Um, number one, if you just put joint compound in there, it's going to look nice for like a week and then it's going to crack and just fall off by itself. But the bead will hold it in place and it also gives you something like to finish off to. It gives you a nice edge to, to float out from. I like the little tape in there. Just, uh, it's not insanely tough to get it off the brick. Not if you don't have to. I'll blob a bit on there, and then you use that edge on the bead. And that gives you a nice easy guide to finish to. A couple gentlemen on the face space asked about how I make this little cut around the chimney and how I did it so quickly. <coughs> 
because I'm a fucking badass. Uh, no, it's called scribing. This, uh, this technique's old as dirt, really. Basically, I just took that sheet of drywall. This has nothing to do with finishing. This is a little, uh, sidebar. Um, try to keep it as level as possible. Boom, boom, boom. And that's basically, then I take my oscillating saw and just cut that dude right out. That's pretty much that, dudes. So uh, if you're really interested in pursuing a career in finishing, which is really terrible work and horrible pay, uh, that's really some of the good starting points for you. But that's pretty much that. Uh, I'm pretty tired, so this will be it for today. This is day two. I've maybe got another day, day and a half, maybe two or three. I don't really know. This room's massive.